Hi friends and welcome to this time of gathering around the Word of God together today. I'm so glad that you've chosen to join me as we gather around the Word of God in this moment. We're going to be taking a look at the, our reading today from John 13 verses 31 to 35 which have entitled Love Like Jesus. So I want to invite you to open your Bible and to follow with me as we read from John 13 verses 31 to 35. I'm going to put the words on the screen now as well. I want to invite you to follow. I'm reading from John 13, verses 31 to 35, from the New International Version of the Holy Bible. And it reads as follows. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, we, we come to you in this moment and we hear these words of Holy Scripture. We ask through, through hearing, reading and understanding what it is you are saying to us. You'd open our minds, our hearts, to receive what it is you have to say to us today. So, Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our hearts be pleasing to you, our Rock and our Redeemer, Jesus Christ our Lord, now and always. Amen. Friends, we continue our journey through the season of Easter, a season in the church calendar in which we're exploring the resurrected Christ and discovering more about the risen Christ and what it means for us as the children of God today, as the followers of Jesus, to be an Easter resurrection people. Now with that in mind, our, our reading from John 13 is a reading that seems to be out of place. Because it records Jesus' words to his disciples before his death and resurrection. This is normally a reading that, that is used on Monday Thursday, the, the day before Good Friday. As it falls after Jesus' betrayal by Judas. Judas has left already. And our reading begins with these words, when he was gone. That's Judas. Once Judas had left into the night to go and betray Jesus, the ball is set in motion. Now the Son of Man is glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I'm going, you cannot come. And we share this as part of our Maundy Thursday, the new commandment. And it says, a new commandment, command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Now, this seems slightly out of, out of, out of space as we journey post-resurrection Easter. But we need to understand that, that this reading takes place after the betrayal, but before Jesus' arrest. He shares the meal, he institutes the, the Lord's Supper or the Holy Communion in that space, taking the Passover meal and transforming it into something new. And then after that, he's arrested and betrayed by Peter. So if with the biblical context of between the betrayal and the denial, why are we looking at this reading during the season of Easter? What is it that this portion of Scripture helps us understand as we seek to live out our lives as an Easter people? Well, I want to suggest that it's the new commandment Jesus gives his disciples, and by extension us. And our reading tells us in verse 34 and 35, A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another. Friends, this command to love others was nothing new in the, the culture of the time in which Jesus lived. In the Jewish culture of that day, most people would have known the basics of their faith. And at the core of that basic faith was the love of God and love of others. Now, more devout Jews would have recited what as a mitzvah. In other words, as a, a religious command, the Shema, twice a day. And this was, a, was a, a saying that they would recite as a religious command. Listen, Israel, the Lord is our God. 
the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your being, and all your might. Friends, this, this is a religious commandment that, that they would follow and recite. That permeated their lives and their actions. To love God with, with all of who they are and all that they do. Now in the Gospels, we, we see the religious authorities of that day testing Jesus and, and trying to trip him up by asking the question, which is the greatest commandment in the Jewish law? And Jesus responds to the Jewish authorities with a Shema. And he adds to that Shema. In other words, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And he, he adds to that the law found in Leviticus 19.18. And love your neighbor as yourself. Now we, we find that in all the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew 22, but particularly in Luke 10. Because this conversation about the greatest commandment leads to what we know as the parable or the story of the Good Samaritan. As Jesus explains to the, the Jewish lawyers in that moment who our neighbor is. In other words, who is it that we are intended to love? By that command. So friends, the, the command to love others has deep roots in the culture that day and in the world in which we find ourselves today as well. It's a, a ba basic ethic for life. So much so that, that Jesus in Matthew 7 verse 12 gives us what is known as the golden rule. He tells us, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. If this sums up, for this sums up the law and the prophets. So friends, in our reading, Jesus takes this cultural norm, which is often culturally subjective to the whims and abuse of the egos of others, and helps bring us back to the true meaning of what his commandment is about. In other words, Jesus gives us a definitive point of reference. Jesus tells us, and I want you to read these words with me and on the screen here in your Bible, a new command I give you, love one another, full stop. Now, we know that part. Love one another. We've already covered that. That's part of the cultural norms, both then and now. And we know that that's the right thing we need to do. We need to love one another. But that's a subjective thing because it depends on, on how we're feeling, who they are. But Jesus helps us by giving us the reference point. And I want you to hear these next three words. As I have. Take a moment. Take a look. Love one another. Full stop. As I have. Have loved you as I have. In other words, as Jesus has loved us. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. And it goes on verse 35. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Friends, Jesus' command is, is countercultural and revolutionary for his time. In that Jesus tells us to use his example of love as a standard for our love for others. I want to say it again. Jesus tells us to, to use his example of love as the standard, as the reference point, as the benchmark for our love for others. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Now friends, this, this challenges us to question how we live out our love for others. We need to perhaps start by asking, is our love for others transactional or relational? Transactional or relational? Jesus uses the, a model of relational model of love for us. In other words, he wants to form relationships with us. God, from the beginning of creation, seeks to be in relationship with us. And Jesus models a relational model of love for us and challenges us to live beyond what we can get out of other people. I want to say it again. Jesus challenges us to love beyond what we can get out of other people. In other words, we, we need to love people for, for who they are. We need to seek to live and love relationally with others. We need to, to love people for who they are, made in the image of God and completely loved by God, and not for what we can get out of them. You see, friends, this kind of love finds its, its foundation in humility, in grace, and in forgiveness. In, in following Jesus' example for us to follow. 
And Jesus gives us that example throughout the Gospels. And we, we see Jesus repeatedly in the Gospels exercising humility, grace, and forgiveness. As Jesus seeks to live out this relational love for others. A love that, that's permeated by openness, by grace, by acceptance, by humility, by compassion and forgiveness for others. In other words, it's a selfless and sacrificial love. We, we have the Greek word for that. It's agape love or agape love. It's a, a love that is, is selfless. In other words, putting self aside and, and caring for the needs of others, like the Good Samaritan did. Sacrificial love, like Jesus did on the cross for you, for me, taking our sins and paying the price so that we can come into a relationship with God. So friends, let us hear this, this new commandment that, that Jesus the one who has risen from the grave, who has overcome sin and death and is making a relationship with God possible, gives us a new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Now I want to invite you to say that with me, friends. The words are on the screen. If not, you've got your Bible in front of you. Let's say those words. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that, that you are my disciples if you love one another. Friends, may this new command be a challenge to us as an Easter resurrection people to examine how we live out our love for others. Perhaps you need to ask the question, are we following Jesus' example of love? Of relational love, selfless and sacrificial love. A love that, that actually costs us something. A love that, that moves beyond warm feelings to actions for others. Or are we loving or living out something else? Now friends, as I close the sermon, I want to invite you to, to spend time with God this week. Whatever that may look like for you. And as you spend time with God, ask God to help you to live out this command to love as God would love, have and help you love others. With me, ask God to, to help you live out this command that you may love others as God would have you love them. With that, we come to a time of prayer. Let us pray. Father, we come and we, we thank you that you are a God of grace love, forgiveness. A God who embraces us as we are and receives us through your forgiveness and through your grace. As we become your children, we, we thank you that we grow in relationship with the Almighty God. But as we encounter your love, it, it builds up in us and we begin loving others as well. Help us to grow in that love. That we may hear the words of Jesus and follow the command to love one another as Jesus has taught us to love. As Jesus has empowered us. And Almighty God, as you empower us to love those around us. So strengthen us to live out this love, we pray for others. Guide us in what that looks like. For we ask this all in your precious name, Jesus. Help us to know what to do with what we've heard today through this sermon. And to be able to put it in practice in our lives. For we ask it in Jesus' name, now and always. Amen. Friends, be blessed and I, I pray that you explore the as you explore this new commandment to, to love others as I have loved you. May you know God's love in strengthening you. And may you receive that love from God as the source of your strength as you love others. Because God is always with us. God is always strengthening us, now and always. Amen.